falsehood perishes. For falsehood is by its nature bound to perish. So if you are doing journalism, see to it that you always speak the truth. I do know the Quran says, give us the wrong in Surah Humaza, chapter 104, verse number 1. Why lulli kulli humazatil lumaza. Woe to every kind of scandal monger and backbiter. The Quran says in Surah Hujurah, chapter 49, verse number 11 and 12, that do not backbite. If you backbite, it's as though you're eating the meat of a dead brother. I do know backbiting is wrong. So in journalism, you don't have to backbite, sister. And one more thing is there, that what is made public, suppose a person does something evil, and if you warn the people, that this person is a bad person, that's not called a backbiting. If you call a backbiting, I would say that type of backbiting is allowed in Islam. Where if you're warning someone, for example, the Hadith of beloved Prophet says that if somebody comes to ask you that you want to marry so and so person, and you know the background of that person, you say, no, that boy is not good, he has alcohol. If that's called backbiting, that type is allowed because you're warning the person against certain harm. So if you're warning the people of the Ummah against certain harm of certain person, this type is allowed in Islam. So in journalism, if it's the truth, and you warn the people against some calamity, against certain evil, Islam gives you permission. But don't write wrong things just to earn money. So that article will sell, and you speak against someone so that that person gets a vote, or somebody gives you money, 10,000 rupees, okay, write against this politician, write against this institute, write against this group. All this happens, you know. It happens more in the Muslim press. That you take this money and write against this organization, you take this money right in favor of this organization. This type of journalism is haram. If it's the fact, you can very well say, sister, and we require journalists. It's part of dawah. It's the part of the duty of the Muslim ummah to spread the message of Islam. Today is the age of journalism, technology, satellite, etc. You have to utilize this media to spread Islam, sister. Hope that answers the question. Do we have any questions from the gen section? Assalamu alaikum. Uh, I am Hashim Ali. Uh, Brother Jakir Naik, my question is, it was published in an article, I can't remember that uh, magazine name, uh, regarding Miraj of uh, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It says, in the 6th century, a fool claimed that he went to heaven. How will we, uh, how we the Muslim Ummah clear this type of misconception? So they ask a question that he read an article that Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi went to heaven. How can Muslim Ummah create such a misconception? Whether prophets have been given various miracles, and prophets can do miracles, they are signs of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. What are referring to the Mihraj of beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? The references are given in the Quran in Surah Isra, chapter 17, verse number 1, that the Prophet was transported from Masjid al Haram to Masjid Aqsa. Masjid Haram to Masjid Aqsa. And then you read in the Sahih Hadith in Sahih Bukhari that the Prophet went to the heavens, etc. It's a fact. Thing is that these are miracles. Like the Quran says that Musa alayhi salam split the ocean into two, the sea into two. Isa alayhi salam, he was born without a male intervention. These are miracles. Neither can science disprove, neither can science confirm. That goes in the ambiguous lot. What we say, these were the prophets of God, they were messenger of God, they were given certain miracles. So these were done with the permission and will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Hope that answers the question. We have a brother by the name of Joseph Matthew who, whose question is, why do Muslims call Islam as the best religion when there are many Muslims who are unreliable and dishonest? These Muslims are involved in activities such as frauds, bribing, cheating, or dealing in drugs. Can you please explain? The question posed was that why do you call Islam as the best way of life when you find Muslims dealing in drugs, dealing in alcohol, cheating, etc.? Why Islam is the best? You can defer to my video cassette. I've given the talk Islam, the universal religion, Islam, introduction, and then I've proven that why Islam is the best way of life. For Islam not only speaks good things, it shows you a way how to achieve that good things. And if you heard in my talk, I always speak about Islam as the best way of life. The reason that you find that, you know, people saying Muslims are bad, they deal in alcohol, they deal in drugs, they deal in this. I do know that there are black sheep in every community. I do know Muslims, though Quran says alcohol is prohibited, some Muslim can drink the non-Muslim under the table. I do know that. The media is in the hands of the Western world. The media projects Islam in the wrong way. We do have black sheep in the community, even in Islam, even in Muslims we have black sheep. As I give the example, that if you find one Arab, age of 50, marrying a girl of 16 years old, it becomes a headline in the paper. You know, as though every day you find thousands of Arabs marrying 16 years old girls. I will be projecting it that way. And on the other hand, when you have a non-Muslim, 50 years old man raping a 10 years old girl, it's nowhere there in the news. 
the media is in their hand. So they influence the people to make Muslims look like terrorists, like fundamentalists, like bad people. They project it that way. So because media is in their hand, they give a wrong picture. I'm not saying that we don't have Muslims who are bad. Actually, a Muslim cannot be bad. Because Muslim means one who submits his will to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If he submits his will to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he will not gamble, he will not rob, he will not have drugs, he will not rape, he will not molest. These Muslims, their names like Muslim. They are lip service Muslim. They are pseudo Muslims. They are true Muslims. They are black sheep in a community. But in spite of this, Alhamdulillah, yet, yet, as a whole, Muslim as a whole, yet, Alhamdulillah, with all the drawbacks that we have, yet, Alhamdulillah, we are the biggest community of teetotalers. Teetotalers means we don't touch alcohol as a whole. We are the biggest community that gives maximum charity with all our drawbacks. Alhamdulillah. We are the community which has the maximum modesty, maximum sobriety, alhamdulillah, with all the black sheep in our community. So firstly, I blame the media. And besides that, even if someone says that, okay, Muslims are bad. Suppose, hypothetically, I do agree that most of the Muslims are bad, hypothetically. But what I say, in my talk, I speak about Islam as the best way of life. I don't speak about Muslims as the best. And if suppose you want to judge a car, suppose you have a Mercedes car, and you want to analyze how good the car is. A person who does not know how to drive the car, he sits on the steering wheel and he bangs up the car. Who will you blame? Will you blame the car or the driver? Who will you blame? The driver. The driver did not know how to drive the car. He didn't have a license, first time he's driving a car. Similarly, if there are Muslims who are not practicing Islam correctly, blame the Muslims, not the religion. If you want to judge the religion, judge according to authentic sources, the Quran and the Sahih Hadith. And if you want the exemplary Muslim, the best Muslim example is our beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. There's no better example. If you want to judge a car, put the best driver and then judge it. The best person, best exemplary Muslim as the Quran says in Surah Kalam, chapter 16, verse number 4, Verily thou art standard on the highest standard of character. Quran says in Surah Azab, chapter 33, verse 21, that verily in the messenger you'll find the most beautiful pattern of conduct. The best example is the beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He's the best example. If you want to judge Islam, judge by his behavior. No wonder Michael H. Hart, a person who's an American, who's a Christian, who wrote a book on the hundred most influential people in history. The hundred most influential people in history, right from Adam, peace be upon him, till present time. And number one he gave, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. He's not a Muslim. Why should he give Prophet Muhammad number one, peace be upon him? It's a fact. He was an honest person. And Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, number three. Number one is Muhammad, peace be upon him. Best exemplary. I do know people say, oh, you know, you find that you find no Muslim country which is good and they go to bad thing and this thing. I said, see, I do know that there's not a single country in the world who's following Islam in total. But there are countries which follow certain parts. Those countries which follow criminal law, you find crime the least in that country. Those which follow the economic law, you find economics the best in that country. If you want to judge any community as a whole, a country or a state which are the best, at the time of the beloved Prophet, best example, at the time of the four rightly guided Khalifas, Hazrat Abu Bakr, Hazrat Umar, Hazrat Usman, Hazrat Ali, may Allah be pleased with them all. Best example, see the community at that time. It was the best. If you want to judge as a state, by implementing Islamic law completely, what results come? See the times of the rightly guided Khalifa and the time of the beloved Prophet. That's the best. Hope that answers the question. May we have the next question from the sister's side. Assalamu alaikum. I'm Naushin from a school student from Mangalore. My question is, is a Muslim woman with full parda allowed to work in television for news bro broadcast station as it takes place in Saudi Arabia? The sister asked a question that can a woman in full parda, you are referring to face being open, I believe. Face being open, no? Cover. Are they like eyes are open? Sorry? Eyes can be seen. Eyes can be seen. I think covered. Sister is saying that if a lady is supposed to give a news on a television with full face covered, only eyes can be seen, and she gives the news, is it allowed? Sister, if you have all the men in the Muslim world dead, then I would say no problem. Are the men dead? A man giving with proper clothes is much more better. The impact will be better. The thing is that when dawah should be done, 
the women should do among women, the men among men. Sometimes it can be done on different levels, like on a stage I'm doing and people are watching, no problem, on one-to-one -one basis, etc. The women are supposed to maintain the hijab. And it is again the principle of hijab that the women come on the television. Television. So it's much more preferred that but now.